Second half of action, getting ready to start here in Pullman, Washington. Cougars up 6-5 over the Aggies on this opening week of the college football season. Welcome back, Jordan Ken alongside Bob Davey. And Bob, for two coaches that pride themselves on being offensive-minded, this first half has been a defensive battle. Yeah, the most exciting 6-5 no touchdown games I've ever been a part of. I mean, really credit to both defenses playing very hard because it's not easy. Both these offenses spreads it out. Both have exciting skill players. It's a heck of a ball game. Heck of a ball game. Explosive plays are hard to come by here in the first half. However, Utah State striking first. It was Devin Tompkins with the 45-yard completion here for Peasley. Yeah, an example of kind of what the first half has been. A big play, as you mentioned. Devin Tompkins down the seam. Balls on the one yard line. From this point, Utah State has three false starts. Has to settle the, for the field goal. And Patrick Joyner, the transfer from Texas, gets the safety. Jared Guantano, the starting quarterback, injured on that play. Have to be excited for Washington State's defense. Forced two big turnovers, flipped the field. They got two field goals out of them. This is a great play right here by the corner, Derek Langford. I would like to see him make a little better move right there on Logan Bonner, but they did get a field goal out of the game, out of that play. Numbers from the first half, you see both offenses not getting a whole lot going. Passing yards, advantage Utah State on the ground, surprisingly Utah State as well too, 96-52. The story's been third down. Both teams have combined at three of 13. There's gonna be some big explosive plays in this second half, I really believe that. If you're Utah State, back to maybe some of the quarterback runs with Andrew Beasley uh, for, for Washington State. The other quarterback, Jalen Delora, now is the guy in charge. He's exciting. He can make plays with his legs. Great scrambler, in my opinion. There's a shot of Garantano on the sideline with that brace now on that left knee, planted awkwardly when he was sacked in the end zone for that safety. So it looks like Delora will still be the man at quarterback for the Cougars. And this time, Looks like Savon Scarver's gonna get a chance, and Scarver trying to bounce it around to the outside. He's finally brought down at the 28. So Scarver, the former All-American return man for the Aggies, getting a chance to return his first kickoff of the night. Utah State alternating these two quarterbacks, Andrew Peasley and Logan Bonner. In every series, they start with Peasley. I'd go back to some quarterback runs. He had three of them early in the first quarter that were very explosive plays. Easily two of five for 50 yards through the air. On the ground though, three rushes, 42 yards. Now his first drive helped the Aggies get down to the one yard line, but then three all starts penalty backed him up the field goal range. Here's the carry by Calvin Tyler Jr. He's met before he gets nine yards on that scramble. Interesting to see if both teams will commit a little bit more to the run in the second half. Utah State comes out here playing with a tight end in the game rather than four wide receivers. Tyler Jr. again. Sprints ahead, brought down. Explosive. But give that offensive line credit, particularly the left side of this offensive line. Alfred Williams, number 72. Alafua, number 58. Two plays in the second half, two runs for Utah State has flipped this field position already. That is Tanner Moku on back-to-back -back tackles, but there's a look at Tyler Jr. who quickly sprinted over to the sideline, and well, Elyon Noah will fill in for him. A third consecutive run for the Aggies, and after not getting much on the ground in the first half, here they are to start the second and half. All to the left side. You know, that big offensive tackle, Alfred Williams, six foot seven, 320 pounds. He's played a lot of football for Utah State. Aggies keep it on the ground again, and the Cougars finally snuff that. So four consecutive runs to begin this second half. Another one of those third downs, right? Both teams, as you mentioned, struggling on third downs, particularly Utah State. Utah State just two of six on third down. Peasley will keep it. Slant route broken up on the outside, and that is Jalen Watson. 
The redshirt senior from Augusta, Georgia. These two corners from Washington State. Jalen Watson, six foot three, wearing that number zero. Pre-game had that shirt pulled up where you could see those abs, <laughs> kind of like you used to do in Oregon. <laughs> used to do, keyword, used to do. But Watson wearing the number zero because that's how many completions he wants to give up this year. Only gave up one completion in that shortened season last year. Utah State knows it's man-to-man -man coverage right here by Washington State. Fourth down for the Aggies. Peasley rolling out. Peasley trying to find his man, and that is a completion and a first down. Kyle Van Leeuwen always makes plays, they say. It's really the, the, the highlight of, of fall camp for Utah State. Big, big fourth down conversion. So the chains continue to move. Peasley able to use his arm that time. Has to run out of the pocket, surveying the field. Peasley trying to be patient. He'll just scamper out of bounds. Short gain of one for Utah State. Peasley is athletic. Started last year for Utah State. You could see the advantage of that quarterback again. Again, when that field spreads like it does. Of taking off and running. Second and nine. Aggie slowing down the tempo for a change here on this drive. Peasley hit as he throws it. It's up for grabs. And Jabril can't get his mitts on it, but excellent pressure up the middle from Washington State. The downside of these RPO run pass options is linemen downfield. You know, those offensive linemen, as we know, are blocking the run. The quarterback holds on to the run and then throws the RPO. I think it's going to be linemen downfield. They may pick the flag up. Yeah. Downfield. The offense. Third down. Now watch the right offensive guard. He thinks it's a run. Obviously, you're only allowed two yards downfield across the line of scrimmage. He was five yards downfield. Third and nine. Peasley backing. The screen pass. Tyler Jr. back in the game. That is quickly stopped, though. Number 82 with the big stop, Travion Brown. So both defenses, Bob, doing what they set out to do, forcing the other yeah, team to I kick. That's a great point. And both offenses settling for field goals. It's kind of been the story of the game, really. So a 39-yard attempt for Connor Coles. His career long is 44. On the left hash mark. Kick is good. So Utah State will continue to take the lead in our baseball-like score. Eight to six advantage Aggies. Cougar ball when we come back. Ten plays, 50 yards, resulting in a 39-yard field goal for the Aggies as they take a two-point advantage over Washington State. It's been a busy day here in the conference as the Pac-12 has faced off against the Mountain West in four separate games. Here's the result of the other three. Oregon getting a narrow victory over Fresno State, 31-24. Anthony Brown going for 172 yards and a touchdown. USC versus San Jose State, no problem for the Trojans, 30-7. Keaton Slovis was excellent. 263 yards and two touchdowns. Right now, though, Nevada up 22-14 over Cal in the third quarter. And we'd be remiss not to mention the huge victory for the UCLA Bruins, 38-27 over LSU as Harris will bring this one out. Harris tripped up at the 32, but there's a flag on the play. He is explosive. Unfortunately for Washington State, they're going to start with very poor field position because of the penalty. Some Mountain West Conference officiating crew here. Hold it. Number 12 to be sleeping team. 10 yard penalty. Spot of the foul. First down. 
you know, Utah State came out and really established a bit of a running game on that on that last drive with Calvin Tyler. I wonder if Washington State will do the same thing. You know, I see Max Borgie in there with the size of this offensive line, particularly those two offensive tackles they have. I really believe they can run the football. The two running backs for Washington State have combined for just eight yards. Borgie and McIntosh has been the quarterbacks, Delora and Garantano that have rushed for a combined 44 yards. Here is Delora. And the completion is good to Donovan Ali as he sprints down the field. Just a simple slant route. Good timing right there. Right, right there. You know, Donovan Ali, a guy they had to lose weight. And they really feel like he's improved. Ollie, the redshirt sophomore out of Wiley, Texas. A lot of size and length on the outside for these Washington State receivers. Delora again looking down the field and just too long for the outstretched arm of Harris as he tries to make the diving catch. Yeah, Travell Harris has had some opportunities where the ball has just been a little bit off target. And he is wide open up that seam. Maybe just take a little bit off that thing and lay it in there. We oftentimes here in fall camp, the defense is ahead of the offense when it comes to just getting on rhythm. Is this a case of what we're seeing here tonight? You no, know, there's been plays to be made. I mean, it's been close to some really big explosives. Borgie trying to explode himself, getting to the outside, and Max Borgie, nothing but runway as Borgie punches in the first touchdown of the night for the Cougars, and they take the lead. There's some plays to be made. That was impressive right there. 64 yards on the run for Max Borgie, a game-breaking carry. 64 yards untouched. You're going to see the corner, I believe, Zadori Jackson, number four, makes a critical mistake, gets caught inside right there, excuse me, number 14. And then Max Borgie shows that explosiveness down the sidelines. Three plays, 79 yards, capped off by that 64-yard touchdown run for Max Borgie, who's continuing to climb up the all-time rushing touchdown list in Washington State history. They love his confidence. They say he's one of the most confident players this coaching staff has ever been around. He was hurt for their first three games last season and played against Utah, one of the better defenses in this conference, and coaching staff saying, there's just a different type of confidence in the huddle when Max Borgie is in there, and it just really spreads to the other players. So Borgie now the leading rusher for the Cougars, seven carries, 70 yards. Janikowski for the extra point. And just like that, Washington State back on top, 13 to 8. With the biggest play of the game, Max Borgie, 64 yards untouched to the house. The Cougars are starting to roll. Max Borgie, 64-yard touchdown, the longest run of his career, puts the Cougars on top, 13 to eight. You see him chopping it up with Renard Bell, their leading receiver tore his ACL prior to the season, but nothing but smiles on the sideline for Washington State as they regain control of this game and just the joy, the camaraderie that the Cougars have yeah, been and pulling showcasing. for each other. I mean, these kids spend so much time together. You know, all through the COVID thing, spending all summer here, every summer. Just nice to see guys enjoying each other's success. Cougars continue to try and keep it away from Savon Scarver, but this is Devin Tompkins who's trying to make some business with that. Quickly wrapped up with one more look at Max Borgie who opens up this game. He bounces it outside. No containment by Utah State. Again, you see the corner gets caught inside. And just like that, just like that, there are so many big plays to be made in these spread offenses with the amount of space in there. 
So Borgie getting closer and closer to the all-time career rushing touchdown number at Washington State. That number 33 by Steve Broussard seriously in jeopardy this season. Borgie continues to do things at this pace. Logan Bonner back in at quarterback. Another productive run on first down for the Aggies. But back to Borgie, just his versatility, of course, on the field, but what he means to this team off the field. He dealt with that injury for all of last year except the game against Utah, and you've been around players like this. You need someone that everyone can rally around when you're facing some adversity. Yeah, just look at those shots we've just shown him on the sidelines. He energizes everybody, and that's what the coaches said. I mean, he is confident, borderline cocky, but the other players respond to him. John Gentry, the running back for Utah State. They are certainly going by committee. We've seen three different backs carry it here tonight. He lunges forward for the first down. When you run the football, you slow the tempo down a little bit. You know, it's hard to go really, really fast to be able to block all those fronts. Utah State's kind of slowed down here, relied a little bit more on the running game, and now come back with the RPO. Bonner. Can't complete it to Derek Wright. Bounces off his forearms. That'll bring up second down for the Aggies. <laughs> Utah State trying to figure out who's going to be their quarterback for this season. You've seen some good stuff from Bonner, some stuff from Peasley. They both made mistakes this game. How do you go about selecting that signal caller? What are you looking for from that position? I think there's opportunity for both these guys to play. I've been impressed with both of them. Just ability. Here's Gentry again with the carry. Picks up about six yards. Picks up a manageable third down for Utah State, but third down is where both teams have struggled tonight. So look at Blake Anderson on the sidelines. Seven years at Arkansas State, six straight bowl games. Did a great job at Arkansas State. Moved on to Logan, Utah, and I think Utah State very fortunate to have him. Third and seven. Bonner, the pump fake, dumps it off. Here is Gentry in the open field, upended, an absolute shot by Armani Marsh, who comes in with a head full of steam. Impressive, the execution of this play. Logan Bonner, the screen, very patient. Wow. That's a new thing in college football, isn't it, to try to jump over the tackle. I was always told, don't leave your feet. Sometimes it looks good, <laughs> sometimes it looks awful. More often times than not, it's the latter result as Gentry stopped. You know, and if anybody was going to do it, it was you, right? Basketball player, track athlete, football player. I mean, you're the guy that's going to be able to do all those things. Well, see, I stayed away from the hurdles. I didn't like obstacles in my way as Bonner rolls to his left. And what a dart outside to McGriff, who gets the completion. But there is a flag on the play. Wow, that throw rolling to his left and throwing the ball with that velocity and that accuracy. That was impressive right there by Logan Bonner. And we saw Peasley step onto the field for a few steps and Bonner waving him off saying he's good to go. You can see how fortunate Blake Anderson is to have Logan Bonner make that journey from Arkansas State to Logan. That was impressive right there. You know what he talked about, I asked him about handling that situation of, you know, the sensitivity of leaving Arkansas State as the head coach. And I think four of these Arkansas State players following him, but you know he handled that the right way. I mean, they were leaving Arkansas State regardless. It's difficult because you want to establish chemistry on your new team as Gentry squirts up the middle. But what we've heard so far from Anderson is that the buy-in from Utah State this season has been beyond anything he could hope for. Everybody getting on the same page has made it such a joy. Let's see if they can score a touchdown here. They've settled for field goals, had a safety. See if they can put the ball in the end zone and respond to that drive by Washington State. Second and five, Bonner up top, trying to go top shelf. Bowling can't haul it in. Brandon Bowling, the senior out of McKinney, Texas, getting the target. Yeah, another Arkansas State transfer right here, Brandon Bowling. 
<laughs> Great coverage again by Langford. That's tough now, locked up like that, one on one. That's great coverage. You've seen a lot of those fade routes. You tell the receiver trying to get both hands free can be challenging. And so that brings up third and five for Bonner and the Aggies. Three receivers to the right. One on one coverage up top. Timeout, Utah State. Aggies trying to match the touchdown from the Cougars from the previous drive here in Pullman. Pac-12 kickoff week is presented by Taco Bell. And brought to you by 76. We're on the driver's side. And by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Terrific game going here in Pullman. Students back in session. Don't think he's a dance major. We're just happy to be here. We're happy to be back in the stands. I think he's probably been well hydrated <laughs> as this game is. Back shoulder trying to go to Tompkins. Bonner incomplete. They wanted pass interference. I mean, so many times when that ball's underthrown on that fade route, it ends up being pass interference. Swats right here. I mean, that one on one, if that ball's underthrown, usually that's going to be pass interference. That is Armani Archie, the red shirt sophomore from Vallejo, California. That was close right there. That, that, that looked like pass interference to me because he impeded the receiver's opportunity to come back and catch that football. Connor Coles, 28 yard attempt, trying to get his third field goal of the night. Coles. And through the uprights, and that'll bring Utah State closer. Cougars still lead 13 11. Again, hold them to field goals, right? And they're moving the ball, Utah State, but they're settling for field goals. Third field goal of the game for the Aggies. They have that safety also, a safety in which starting quarterback for Washington State, Jarrett Garantano. Talk about two characters, right? From Mike Leach <laughs> to Nick Rolovich. And I, I think back, this is my first time to Pullman. This is really, really a great little college town. I think back to all the six Mike, Mike Price had here at Washington State, but Two personalities, Mike Leach and Nick Rolovich. And terrific facilities here as we walk around and just the way, again, this community revolves around everyone. And Rolovich, as you said, leads the way for this team. This is why this team is having a lot of fun this year, a lot of confidence. And if you think about how difficult his first year was last year, when we were playing four games, you had two games that were canceled at the last minute. They were on the field warming up against Cal for a Cal player tested positive and that game was canceled and on their way to a game against Stanford on the bus that game was canceled as well too so the Cougars is happy to be playing football as Harris will take this kick out also Harris trying to weave through some traffic nice return up to the 31 yard line you go back to Nick Rolovich in Washington State they really do need to win these first two football games you know they have Utah State here at home uh, I believe they get Portland State next they need to win the first two going into that Pac-12 schedule. And I really do think that's why he made this decision to go with Jared Garantano at the quarterback position because just solid, no mistake football, you should be able to beat Utah State and Portland State. And Jaden Delora has been solid tonight. He's helped extend some plays with his legs. This time, fakes the handoff to Borgie. It's Calvin Jackson Jr. making the catch, picking up a few yards afterwards. So Jackson Jr. starting to rack up the receptions after getting a little bit of experience last year. You mentioned the schedule for Washington State, a tough pairing of Pac-12 South opponents that they have to face off against after this matchup against Portland State next week. USC and Utah in consecutive weeks. Just be 2 0 somehow. Borgie sprinting to the outside. 
Again, Cut that, by Shaq Bond. That's too easy. You know, I think Utah State's defense has really played well tonight. But again, no edge on the defense. Borgie untouched for six yards. Keep him in the box. Keep him between those tackles. Don't give him that short, fast corner. And he just has such terrific bursts as soon as he gets the handoff. No wasted motion. So Borgie, 15 yards on that last rush. Here is Jackson Jr., the screen, making his way downfield. Flag on the play. He's knocked out of bounds. So Hadri Jackson with the contact at the end of the play. That's coming back. That's a hold one of the big linemen out there in front of that jailbreak screen. Number 88 for the offense. 10-yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. No, actually, Dazon Stribbling, the freshman wide receiver, gets caught. Injury timeout. We have a Utah State player down on the field near the sideline. That's number four, Shaq Bond, being tended to at the moment. Another one of those super seniors, Shaq Bond. Welcome back. Let's check out the Grove Collaborative Game Summary. Max Borgie busting open this game with a 64-yard touchdown run in the third quarter for the Cougars. Jared Garantano leaving the game with an injury in the first quarter when he took a safety. And as far as turnovers go, the Cougars have been flawless. Meanwhile, Utah State, a fumble and an interception as the Cougars continue to cling on to a two-point lead, and they have possession. Deion McIntosh now in the backfield for Washington State. First and ten for Jaden Delora after the hold brings the screenplay back. Delora trying to go deep. Here is Stribling. Can't get to it. Give him a chance, right? Jaden Delora just threw that one out of the back of the end zone. Give the big freshman receiver a chance. Interesting. Dejon Stribling, you mentioned from Hawaii. Not much tape on him coming out of high school. Comes in here as a true freshman and rolls in January. Very excited about number 88 and his future here. 6'2", 202. Not built like your typical freshman either. Hasn't had too many opportunities tonight, though. Second down. Delora again looking deep. And again can't connect with Stribling. Cam Lumpkin, again, the corner. They talk about his confidence. He does play with a lot of confidence as well. Interesting, you talk about Utah State and Ephraim Bonda, their defensive coordinator, coming over from Miami. He watched a lot of tape on Utah State's defense before he took the job. And the reason he took the job was because he felt they had a lot of DBs that could play man-to-man. -man. Because in this day and age, you better have some talent in that secondary and some coverage guys. They've been able to cover tonight, and especially in third down, Washington State just one of seven. Here comes the blitz. McIntosh picks up the screen. And a terrific play call, and then a late hit coming in. That'll warrant some laundry onto the field and put Washington State in even better position. Third and long. Come with the screen pass to McIntosh. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, number 23 of the defense. That bill will be the first half the distance of the goal. Automatic first down. Twenty yards on the screen for Dion McIntosh. Tack on the penalty yardage, and the Cougars are in the red zone, knocking on the door, trying to get their second touchdown of the night. Big third down conversion, right? Third and ten. Just the second third down conversion of the game for Washington State. Flag on the play. Ball start against Washington State. Yeah. 
And we've seen this multiple times on this Both end of the field. <laughs> yeah. Five yard penalty. Yeah, Utah Next State with down. three false starts early in the game in a row when they had the ball down there at the one yard line. So the false start was on the receiver, Mitchell Quinn. You typically don't see that in the red zone. And the Cougars much more productive on offense here in the second half. This third quarter alone, 120 yards after just 137 in the entire first half. First and goal for Delora. Surveying the field. Delora trying to use his legs again. He'll flip this outside. Ollie had a chance to come back to it, but that'll bring up second down for the Cougars. That was a great job by Marcus Moore. The Utah State defensive lineman of being able to contain Jaden Delora. It looked like a lot of space. Right now, things don't look good for Utah State. That is a great effort right there by Marcus Moore. Credit Moore for getting laterally across the field very quickly to get that leverage on Delora. But we have another Aggie down at the two yard line, the Washington State sideline. So after Shaq Bond a few plays ago had to be helped off the field with the training staff. And we're very fortunate to play these night games early in the season. I mean, you watch some of the games around college football, the early games on a Saturday afternoon with the Heat. It really is survival. I mean, this is a beautiful night today to play football. Barely any wind temperatures, just in the mid 60s at this point. That's Cash Gilliam, the senior from Dayton, Ohio. One of the toughest things as a head football coach is those decisions you make in training camp. How much one on one or full contact tackling do you do? How much conditioning do you do? Are you too tired? Are you working them too hard? Th those decisions, those are so difficult. And I imagine this season, especially having to just take into account the toll mentally last season took, you've got to assess where the heads are at of yeah, all your and players. With all these transfers coming in, you know, you always think more is better because you're behind a little bit trying to get them to gel as a team. You know, but when is more too much? And, that's always kind of the, the, the ace decision. Cougars trying to put more on the scoreboard here. Second and goal from the 12. Delora will fake the handoff. Delora to the outside. Solid contain by the Aggies. That is Hale Motuapuaka giving the stop on Delora. Hold them the field goals. I mean, that, that is the story of tonight. It wasn't a game that we came in thinking the kickers would take center stage. Third and goal for the Cougars. Two for eight on third down. They converted their last third down to keep this drive alive. A tough position here, third and goal from the 12. Not a lot of real estate to work with here. Delora. Fires a strike into the chest, and that is Donovan Ollie with the catch and the muscle into the end zone, and Delora delivering again on third down. Perfectly executed slant route here. Let him inside. Safety playing with probably a little bit too much depth, but give DeLoren and Ollie credit. I mean, that was a big time connection right there on that slant route. He plays 69 yards, capped off by 12 yard touchdown. Extra point is good. Donovan Ollie using every pound of that 210 pound frame to push his way into the end zone. And the Cougars. Three straight scoring drives trying to open this game up. They now lead by nine and back to back big time third down conversions for DeLorean right there. Just a big time physical play when the Cougars needed it the most. It's been an explosive third quarter. Well, that's what we saw. The Cougars have 
basically matched their yardage total from the first half in this third quarter alone. We still have four minutes left to go. That's what you wondered with this Washington State team. You make that transition from fall camp and your first live action. It's a late game, so you're sitting there all day long thinking about this game. You get here and just getting used to game speed and how fast everything starts to happen. It's fun to watch these players, knowing how much they put into this, see the enjoyment they have. Well, both these teams really trying to turn things around from last season. Such a departure from where they were at a few years ago as Scarver's going to get a chance here. And Scarver and a terrific open field tackle by the Cougars special teams unit. Excellent job of making Scarver go east and west and go sideways. And an excellent tackle by Lincoln Victor, the wide receiver, not afraid to stick his nose in there. Good placement on the kick, too. Kind of pinned him on the sideline. Scarver tried to take it back to the middle of the field. You know this, this is a play that a lot of fans will watch and see that open field tackle, think nice job. That'll light up the special teams meet, meeting Absolutely. when they meet the next week. Peasley back in at quarterback. Connects with Derek Wright on the sideline. Impressed with Peasley's arm strength as well. Well, Peasley really put himself in a position to challenge for this spot in the offseason. His work ethic, his approach, Really leading by example, even trying to be more vocal as he hands it off to Calvin Tyler Jr. Tyler Jr. in the middle of a career night. Now up to 10 rushing attempts. But more of that Utah State tempo. Tyler Jr. again getting upfield. Brought down just inside the 30. Still waiting to see Peasley with a quarterback run. Either zone read or predetermined quarterback run. Peasley trying to push the pace. He'll glance over to the sideline for some instructions. Second and eight for the Aggies. Under center. First time we've seen that all night. Peasley drops back. And another catch on the outside. Derek Wright starting to get busy tonight. Fourth catch of the game for Wright. He's got 31 yards. Third and four for Utah State. They're just 30% on third downs tonight. The receiver up at the top, you can't even see him in the screen. He split so far up there. True one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top. Cougar show two safeties. Peasley. And just too high, had a man open. Derek Wright was right there again for the first down and just put it too high. Yeah, he overthrew that one. No question. He's going to sit down right in the middle of this zone defense. Finds a soft spot, wide open, no one in the throwing lane. Just overthrows it. And I'd be careful right here. You know, Travell Harris back there as this returner. He's been close tonight to have some explosive plays. Fair catch. Constantly the punt. Fair catch by Harris. So Washington State with their largest lead of the night at nine here, 20 to 11, 156 left here in the third quarter. Interesting day in college football. Alabama is still Alabama, right? I was gonna say, the sun still rises. <laughs> and UCLA, huge win, huge win for Chip Kelly. And that was with LSU. a dominant win the week before, and you really wonder 
what the Bruins can do this year. I know Yogi Roth, we've had several conversations with him. He's one of the surprise. The UCLA Bruins are one of the surprise teams UCLA, for him. UCLA is physical. You're just watching them. There's Borgie lowering his shoulder pads. Approaching 100 yards for the evening. Had that 64-yard touchdown to open this game up for Washington State. The first touchdown score of the night, actually, early in the third quarter. We haven't talked much about Washington State's offensive tackles, but those two offensive tackles, Abraham Lucas, 72, Liam Ryan, 63, they are giants now. And they really do believe Abraham Lucas, 72, is a potential first-round draft choice. 6'7", 319, the redshirt senior. Very athletic, plays even lighter than what his weight shows. Delora steps up into the pocket, moving to the outside, bouncing around, gets the first down. And another late hit coming in on Utah State. Looks like it's against Marcus Moore. Delora is a handful. I mean, he is elusive. Not the biggest, strongest guy. You know, you worry a little bit about his durability, but he does have a little magic. I thought last year in their last game against Utah, wait on this call right here, which is a late hit. Personal foul, late hit, number 95 in the defense. 15 yards will be added to the end of the run. But I thought the Lord in that first half against Utah last year showed what his potential is. Yeah, that's a good call. I think that's the word with Delore. It's potential. You see the athleticism. You see the escapability. How we can turn nothing into something. It's just connecting on some of those fundamental throws that have been there tonight for him. He's so young. You know, he came in last year as a freshman. I mean, he's just he's just getting started. So there needs to be some patience with him, but the upside is outstanding. Delora, the sophomore from Honolulu, again rolling to his left, firing a laser down the field, and that is picked off. Cam Lampkin wrestling on the sideline. Flag on the play, though. Be interesting to see which way this one goes. That's yeah, pass interference on Lampkin. Stribbling the intended receiver. They've tried to go to him several times here in this third quarter, one on one on some deep throws, and haven't been able to convert yet. You said it right. That, that was a laser man that DeLoren threw. Pass interference. Number six in the defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Rolling to his left, just slings it. Nice call, Troy. Nice call. You missed another. I don't love the call. <laughs> I just let him play a little bit. But I was a defensive coordinator coming up through the ranks. As a, as a former coach, wide receiver, I think it's an excellent call. <laughs> You're happy with it. Saw a little bit of a grab of the shoulders beforehand. But those are such difficult bang-bang plays that the officials have to make on those pass interference calls. And it pays off just trying to go to Stribling. They get the pass interference. This time they convert on a shorter pass and Stribling. You see the technique, though. Reaches out outside of his frame to snatch that one in. And He definitely has the body type. I'm not going to say Michael Irvin wearing that number 88, <laughs> but he is just a freshman, not highly recruited, under the radar. Big get for Nick Rolovich here to get that young man. They love how fluid he is with his route running, especially at his size. And you saw that it took three or four Aggies to bring him down. Calvin Jackson, Jr. Yeah, Utah State's starting to wear down a little bit right now. We 
Which is interesting because coming into this game, the concern was with the pace of the Aggies wear down the Cougars. But right now, Washington State playing their best ball of the night. They are knocking on the door for yet another potential score. Is everyone grooving here in Pullman?